Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. Today I review the Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime that was done by Studio Trigger and hosted on Netflix. I think that that's how all that works, uh, hosting and all that. Um, before we get into that, <clears throat> drinking bush light today, I am a poor this week and I have been spending my money on upgrading my equipment for your viewing experience. My camera hasn't come. It said it was going to come today and they lied to me. So it should be here tomorrow. Regardless of all of that, I hope that you guys enjoy this. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button down below. That seriously helps the channel out. And if you guys so feel, go join the Gilded server in the link in the description because that is where our community is gathering and having a blast with all the conversations out there. So let's get into Cyberpunk Edge Runners. This is an anime that is rated TVMA on Netflix, something that I really don't want my kids to come across. Um, got to figure how to do that. And it follows the character of David Martinez, a, uh, very poor member of society who finds himself in a ragtag gang of, uh, deviants and criminals. And it basically pits the criminal poor class against the wealthy corporate class. And in this show, you see the character go from having very little cybernetic modifications to having quite a few modifications. And they play on a couple of interesting things in this show. So, uh, one thing is addiction, the addiction to upgrading and never stopping and so on and so forth. Um, and it was a very interesting concept that they went with. This is based off of the Cyberpunk 2077 video game, which is getting new life now. Uh, that was a game I was very excited for. And then when it came out and was just complete and utter horse crap, I was like, I'm not going to waste my money on it. I might waste my money on it if it gets better. People have been saying it is getting better. So maybe I will go and do that. The story behind David Martinez is uh, he goes through some tragic events in his life and obviously feels that he is on the wrong side of society. This leads him into uh, various different criminal activities and eventually running his own gang. I am going to try to stay as spoiler free as I can, but there are some things that I will I'm going to casually mention. So if you think, oh, wow, that's a spoiler thing. Eh, my bad. Over meeting a lot of these characters, this show definitely does not have a lot of light or good moments. Uh, the animation quality was insanely high. The animation was well done. The overall audio experience was incredible. And the soundtrack definitely lent itself to this anime. The voice acting, I had one issue with the voice acting in the, the, some of the ways that they would say the lines uh, came across very weird to me, um, but I think that was an artistic choice. Um, I'm not going to put that on the voice actors. I think all the deliveries of the voice actors were insanely well done. So overall, the production of the show is, I, I would say the production of the show is a 10 out of 10 um, as far as how well it was put together. And uh, even the story itself was well put together to uh, a certain extent. Here is the portion of the show where you may not like my opinions on this. This is a very, very, very nihilistic and uh, depressing story to follow. The gratuitous violence, the graphic uh, nudity, and a few other things like that. Uh, well, gratuitous nudity. And the overall tone of the characters and the show seems to just spiral downward. There was a lighthearted note at the very end of the series that I do not feel redeemed the rest of the depressive nihilism that was in this. It seems that um, a part one of the things that they played on in this show was how the cybernetic integrations can really damage uh, human beings. I mean, we've actually seen what cybernetic and cyber integration can do to us. Obviously, it may not be in our skin or anything, but the Internet and technology is very much a part of our culture today. And we see kind of the downturning. And maybe maybe I'm reaching too deep here, but that possibly could have been what they were going for. I doubt it, but it would be interesting to see that overall the um 
I feel that this show lends itself into glorifying the deviance of the world and showing off how cool they can be and this, that, and the other thing and the, you know, oh, you know, the, the, the honor of thieves and whatnot. And I am completely tired of stories like that. It was overall too nihilistic and it feeds on too many depressive notes. Watching it, I felt that this show absolutely uh, glorified and could contribute to a lot of what is causing bad storytelling. I don't think that there was any wokeness in this show by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the fourth great religion didn't have a lot to play in here. Um, however, the nihilistic depressive approach to society as a whole playing off of the classist system, the... Uh, rich versus the poor, which is very much a Marxist ideology here, showing that the corporations are absolutely horrible. But then again, and then glorifying, you know, people, you know, doing what they have to do or and, you know, and calling our heroes. We were murderers and thieves, uh, the good guys. I, I don't like that storytelling. I think that that was uh, I, I think that this show is probably not made for me. I don't usually have a problem with graphic violence. I think Demon Slayer is a fantastic anime. I think that it is well done, but it also has a light array of hope at the end. Um, and again, the lighthearted note that this show ended on. Um, oh, and Invincible, too. I actually like Invincible, but there's a note of good in there. Yes, the world sucks, but you do have characters trying to be righteous and trying to act in a good manner. And it's not this completely nihilistic thing that people are going for. One of the things that really just struck me early on in this show was how people dealing with hard times uh, can only be manipulated by their environment or manipulated by others, and you have to steer into one of those. It didn't seem like there was any portion of the show where any character wanted to become better or become more than they were the day prior. All they wanted to do was cybernetically enhance them. They really didn't want to go the distance. There is some parts of the show where the main character mentions maybe fulfilling um, uh, some of the paths that were laid out for him by other people, but it is in a very twisted way and in a very different way. It's one of those subversion things that happens. And again, very much leads into the nihilistic part of the social commentary. Overall, the show was fantastically well produced. The voice acting was on point. The soundtrack was rather bouncy and something that I really liked. The audio was great with the sound effects matching everything that needed to happen. I feel that the uh, gratuitous nudity and the gratuitous violence was just too much well, an overall gratuitous deviancy was just too much for me. Generally, I don't usually have an issue with things like this, but I think we have been overexposed to stories like this. Overall, this show, again, the production quality is very on point. I cannot say that it's not. However, I will say that a storyline like this without any ray of hope at the end, even the ending was a somber, depressive ending. Um... And that is something that I think that uh, not a lot of people are talking about. Everybody keeps saying the show is amazing. The show is amazing. The show is amazing. But I really don't. I I, I don't think that the storyline that they went with showing any sort of light in the darkness. Um, I think that that story is just uh, it's not for me at all. And if you guys like stories where there's a ray of hope at the end or some version of, a, you know, a happy ending, the show doesn't have that. The show feeds into a mentality that life is life and it doesn't really get better. It only gets worse. And the only way to, you know, make yourself any better isn't internally, it's externally. But then again, they also do show the external modifications as somewhat of a down point if people go too far with it. But that's about one of the only redeeming qualities of this show to me is that they did show that you know things that are not done in moderation and go too far can be self-destructive that is one of the few things that i agreed with that this show did but overall if you guys are into you know stories that would probably be similar to that of like a berserk style not saying it's berserk again gratuitous violence nudity really dark storytelling really nihilistic world if you guys are into that you'll probably love this show i i didn't 
It's, uh, I, I don't understand why it's getting the praise that it is. I mean, outside of the animation quality and again, the production that does deserve praise. It is, it is fantastic. It really is. Uh, but I think if that's all people are looking at, they're looking at the show very superficially. And those are my thoughts on cyberpunk edge runners hopefully you guys like this video and let me know what you think down in the comments below i would love to have this debate because i feel like i'm about to piss a lot of people off if you guys have those comments and you say hey you're wrong about it don't forget every sunday i go through and i read the comments from what you guys are saying in all of my videos uh, i not selective right now i don't get enough commentary on this channel for me to be selective with it and i have the opportunity to read every comment in a video and post them on sunday Sundays. So if you want your comment read in the Sunday video where we have a premiere chat because it is a premiere video and we can have a conversation further even in there, post a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, everybody, cheers. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.